All right, hello and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? We're going to do another whipping chat today with Paint with Diamonds, The Battle Ahead by Lothar Dietrich. 60 centimeters by 45 centimeters, 47 colors, and square drill. Slam the picture up here so you know what the canvas looks like, and we'll just have a party now. Yep. Yeah. All right, so how's it going? Hopefully, you're having a wonderful day. Ran a couple errands. It's had a fun time. Purchased a copy of Final Fantasy 16 for the PlayStation 5, and now I'm going to save up for a PlayStation 5. I just wanted to make sure I had a copy of the game that I really wanted to play. And now i got to save up to $800 to get a PlayStation 5. But that's not a major necessity right now, but eventually. I'd love to play it eventually, so save it up now. Alright, so hopefully you're having a wonderful day. It's enjoying the long weekend. No, it's a long weekend up here in Canada. There's like a civic holiday on Monday. Whatever that means. I <laughs> Just a holiday in August. It's like British Columbia Day or something. I, <laughs> up here in Canada, I don't... It's, I, I can tell you. <laughs> Summer holidays for a lot of people. Potentially, like when people take vacations and stuff. But I, I don't know otherwise. I can tell you. <laughs> Whatever vacations are. <laughs> I'm I'm one who just works. Yeah, work life balance, but kind of have to pay the bills. So yeah, it's not. I'd rather just work. Yeah, I know. I probably just uh, kill the life of a party. As I walked into the room. <laughs> I just like, yeah, I'm uh, just going to work. So if I want this PlayStation 5, I'm buying it myself. That's basically the mentality. If you want something, you work for it. So that's what I'm going with. Pay my bills first. That's most important. If I have to wait to get a PlayStation 5, I wait to get a PlayStation 5. It's not the end of the world. But I'll definitely get to play Final Fantasy 16 someday. So it's just something to aim for. I don't know. Yeah, it's not 100% important to have a PlayStation 5 right now, but it's something to work towards. So. I don't know. I. Probably won't be able to just sit down and play a Final Fantasy 16 for like hours, but it it's at least a game when I to have when I have the system. So I bought it used. It would have been like a hundred and something dollars instead. I paid like ninety something Canadian for it. for a used copy of Final Fantasy 16. I'm like I just. Told the cashier at GameStop, it's as long as the disc is in great condition, then I'm all for it. So, like, as long as I have a copy for when I do get a chance to play. That uh, PlayStation 5 is backwards compatible with a uh, good 90% of the PlayStation 4 titles, so I'm planning to get a disc version of the PlayStation 5, so, $780 retail or something for a PlayStation 5. Will it go on sale later in the year or something? I don't know, it's still a couple of years old now, isn't it? Two or three years old? Yeah. Yeah, they'll just keep 
making new game systems, I'd imagine. Yeah, the... There's an Xbox One X or something. Xbox X or something. Only interesting title that I heard of for the newest version of the Xbox was Halo Infinite, because I've played the other Halos, but... Um, PlayStation 5, Kingdom Hearts 4. I kind of have mixed feelings about the Kingdom Hearts franchise at this point, but... It would be a game that I'd jump into. I was upset with Kingdom Hearts 3, obviously. I've talked about that a couple times on here. It's various topics here on Echoes of Color. I don't really... <laughs> I diamond paint, but it's... Yeah, the topics just vary. So, yeah. <laughs> I just talk about something for half an hour. Or just chill and just... Kind of relax for half an hour while just talking sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a really busy multicolor section, I generally am quieter. Just trying to make sure I put the drills on the right <laughs> symbol. But yeah, I'm still here. It's just, yeah, some weapon chats are quieter than others. Others, I just look the timer the recording and it's like over half an hour sometimes and i'm like oh gotta go <laughs> it happens but yeah it just makes another video file if it goes over 32 minutes or something for recording time for the camera so yeah i try to keep it under half an hour I don't know, it's easier to kind of make videos in a half hour kind of loop, half hour kind of format too, for a whip and jet. Not that I miss doing hour long whip and jets, it just means I do like a whip and jet that day. I sometimes did too, and I spent like two hours doing a canvas way back yeah I just had like uh, memory issues on my smartphone here my Samsung yeah it's really just I watch YouTube off of it yeah it still connects to Wi-Fi but it doesn't have a SIM card in it but it has a camera so okay five there <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice walking to a GameStop and people have actually played the games that you're looking for. Like, I've looked up, I've watched interviews with the guy who plays, who is the voice of Clive in Final Fantasy 16 and he's just like a down-to-earth guy he's engaged and yeah all that it's just like a down-to-earth guy and his character and he's a die-hard fan of the Final Fantasy franchise so that just makes it all the better so he's more invested into it but initially he wasn't told that it was Final Fantasy title well neither there was the rest of the cast so they just kind of did the parts but eventually they were they said oh this is Final Fantasy yeah it kind of just kept everybody's focus on the characters like the acting and all that yeah, eventually they were told it was a Final Fantasy title like the cast the voice acting cast but That was probably to keep it hush-hush, because it was like three years to like just 
make the game. Yeah, I think it was like a three-year process. That generally sounds normal for a game development. Yeah. I think the voice actors had 40 hours of script to act out. So. And it could have been motion capture too. It, they had certain, the voice actors had certain equipment on their faces to read their Oh, excuse me, facial movements and all that, and some of the behind the scenes stuff that I watched on YouTube. So, I don't know. Yeah, I do like that behind the scenes stuff. It's kind of cool. But when you see like the ending of Final Fantasy 16, like somebody live streams it, <laughs> when I've just seen gameplay. And somebody's already at the end, like, has sat there for a while and been playing it. It's like, yeah, definitely skipping this. It's like, I think I've seen a spoiler in, like, the YouTube short. Like, something happens to one of the characters and, yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, so much for that. <laughs> Still play the game. It's like enough of a snippet that you don't know the context and kind of look at it that way, but just, yeah. Social media, it takes like milliseconds to spoil a story in any sort of like video game format or movie oh went to see this movie and then blah 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 this happens like on social media and then just yeah just raw spoiled people just like have a tickled fancy doing that kind of thing <laughs> that was like the game of thrones kind of era or walking dead maybe just like, oh, I seen the episode and this happened, and it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> I've seen maybe like three episodes of the first season. I try to sit down and watch it, and I have like the DVDs. I try to get into it, but then I just get easily distracted by something shiny, and yeah, I just forget about it. And knowing I've watched the first few episodes of the first season, or did I make it through the first season? I, I totally forget it. It's been a few years. I don't know. It, there are graphic novels. Like, The Walking Dead came from graphic novels that somebody made. That's how the story was told. And, Graphic novel, you could say, almost like a comic book format. Yeah. But it's not like Garfield, where it's like three panels and Garfield is kicking Odie off a table. No, a graphic novel is illustrated, speech bubbles, like a comic book, or like a comic, but that story is told through, like, various multiple pages. <laughs> Still get a story, it's just not completely text. It's visual and yeah, it's highly visual, but they're what when the characters are talking and interacting. It's speech bubbles or thought bubbles, maybe even. Yeah, I I'd still watch The Walking Dead, like. If I just, like, sat down like I did with uh, Big Brother 15, watching that on YouTube, commercial free, free. yeah, I, I've been going to Big Brother a lot, yeah, just finished watching season 15, but, yeah, as an example, yeah, commercial free, yeah, <laughs> I think in the finale episode, I had fallen asleep, but I woke up right at the end there to see the 
somebody won. So this was like 10 years ago we're talking. It's like early 2000s kind of thing. 2005 or 6. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I watched the episodes before that. Like I watched the whole season. Episode 1 to 32 I think it was. It's a fairly hearty season. <laughs> I guess there must be like archive footage or yeah of the past big brothers somewhere I don't know if there's like live internet feeds like streaming feeds of footage of the house in the past Big Brothers, but I think that was just at the time in that season where the cameras were like just recording everything. I don't think that's available now. But yeah. It's an interesting social experiment. There's been some controversial moments that I kind of looked had a new YouTube video because there's quite a fan base for Big Brother. So some people have like watched all of them and know exactly how the game has changed throughout the years. Yeah, the structure has changed. But yeah, there's UK version and stuff. Australia, I guess too. Yeah. I I thought it had started in the UK. But I think it was Australia where it started, and then it came over to the Americas, uh, the U.S. Yeah, it was international before. Yeah, there's Big Brother Canada, of course, uh, five or six seasons in for that. So I've seen it advertised, but not. I didn't watch anything. Of it. So. But yeah, I guess when calls the heart, uh, it's another show that's coming back in September. That kind of went on hiatus. I think that it was canceled or something, and fans just lost it. Something happened there with that show. I thought the Good Witch was coming back. Heard murmurs of that too, but I've just seen the first like advertisement for One Calls the Heart, and it's just like three main characters standing in the town where the it's set. It, some, it's a period piece kind of drama. Yeah, with a Mountie and then, yeah, just a town. Margaret Thatcher or something, like that historical figure. And then she's in a, it's a fictional universe. She's surrounded by that, but it's a Canadian figure. It's, it's a historical figure, yet just fictionalized. So... Yeah, if you think Murdoch Mysteries, it, it's that kind of time period, kind of style, drama. Not necessarily mystery, but for uh, One Calls the Heart, it's a little more romance kind of thing. Hallmark. <laughs> Hallmark pasted all over it, so. Nothing terrible about Hallmark, but yeah, it's... Kind of like they're trying to sell good feelings and they kind of have to keep it somewhat civilized as passion and all that. Like anything like sexual or whatever is kind of subtly hinted, hinted at, but not blatant. 
they don't show that stuff in those kind of shows. It's only like hinted at. Yeah, these two are like husband and wife or whatever, or these two are together. But yeah, they probably hug and kiss and stuff, but it's not like a soap or some muscular guy is just suddenly making out with a love interest or whatever. <laughs> And there's like a sex scene. It's not like a soap, but just like the intimacy is cut out. <laughs> sure, there are mature themes, but it's not. It's kind of a more friendly, easy watching show. But major stuff still happens plot wise. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of awkward to explain, but... I remember Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, like all those years back. Uh, that kind of had a mature, dramatic tone to it. Uh, probably had mature themes at the time. I was pretty young. But my mom watched it. It's kind of like When Calls the Heart. I don't think it was like extremely mature. Had extreme mature content. But it was kind of like approachable to watch kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. The writer's strike, the Hollywood writer's strike, is uh, still going on, so we're getting really creative uh, shows, or some shows are on hiatus because the writers are on strike. It's That's when more reality shows kind of come out of the woodwork. You're just kind of slapped on just as a distraction as a distraction or because they're easier to produce you really don't have to you know serious writing involved to an extent I don't know if it's reality show what is there a script for if it's like Big Brother yeah uh, what is the host going to say in each segment? Yeah, that's understandable. But other than that, if other stuff is scripted, I'm just, it's, I really wouldn't classify it as reality TV, just entertainment <laughs> or <a> show. <sighs> but nonetheless, there are shows out there that entertain a variety of people want you to tune in they any network or whatever just says hey you can stream this online anytime we just want viewership period stream this on this app they just like remind you like every 10 minutes or so here's a commercial for the radio or tv station and they're just beating that idea home in your into your skull <laughs> you can stream this live on demand or watch it on this app <laughs> meanwhile we're like sitting here with the tv on and uh it's like we're watching it now so why we have a pvr we can uh record any like new episodes of a show if uh, we're not going to see it that particular day like it's like people really don't want to pay for satellite anymore it can probably it's really expensive I guess it's my parents entertainment as I've mentioned in the past but yeah we have satellite I used to have Netflix and all that, but I just wasn't using it. 
It's like it's great. I watched it on my brother's house when he was in France or whatever, like a year ago or whatever. And I did a couple whipping chats or whipping chats that week. I took vacation from work week to babysit my house at my brother's dog and stuff I watched like a seat uh, part of Pokemon Journeys or something on my brother's Netflix again <laughs> he just logged me in he was gone but it's just like hey you can pull up Netflix and then just watch something yeah and I watched a few episodes of Pokemon Journeys so on there but yeah, my nephew, yeah, he probably watches other stuff on Netflix as well. I like guess his own account. Or he streams stuff on his tablet. Yeah, that nephew was born with a tablet in his hand, basically. He had been around technology ever since he's like 12 now, so... Yeah, it's natural that his generation will just have technology in their hand and it's probably getting to the point where they're not going to know what a pencil is they're just going to look at you funny if uh, they're handed a pencil and their printing isn't going to be great it's not like they're going to be behind anything or anything it's just they're just not going to be good at something cognitive as holding a pencil or a pen and printing. They want to bring handwriting back into the school curriculums, and I think... Do you, people still handwrite? I print. My handwriting would be atrocious. So I just print because I have to communicate with other people, like staff members, on, like, paperwork... And it has to be clear and coherent so they understand. But I tell them verbally. And then as a backup, I have it something visually written down if it's an important piece of information for reference so they can go back to it. Like, just print. <laughs> but I, I don't know what's with bringing handwriting back. Uh, when there's like tablets and distance learning after COVID and all that, and I think that some of that distance learning or coursework is still on the tablets now. So I, it's not quite easy for younger individuals, younger children in my nephew's generation to just turn around and probably print. They're just used to having a piece of technology in their hand. That's of course a double-edged sword. Like, don't get me wrong. It... I don't know, we just had to handwrite some stuff. Yeah, of course I typed in essays and had to double space them for like English class or whatever. So they didn't want, yeah. They wanted it in a certain format, so you learn like word processing, formatting kind of thing. So that it was readable or legible. Yeah. But I will always want to hold a pen or a pencil because I grew up that way. I went through school holding a pen or a pencil to write. So, and do various coursework, but and I still do word search with pencil and uh, fine tip markers. Yeah, but anyway, you've been watching Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Down below in the description, I put my Conqueror and Pacer, the main websites, just for information and purposes only. My social media is gone. Yeah, uh, not going to even try to get it back. It, it's gone. So all that's really down there is walking challenges and then two main website links, Conquerors first and Pacers second. 
and then Return of the King under Conquer, that URL, and then Pacer to Silk Road. I'm not affiliated, partnered, or anything with Conquer or Pacer. It's just information. So you know what I'm talking about when I suddenly talk about reading on the treadmill. It's mostly exercise bike now, but yeah. Other than that, take care. All the best with your crafting endeavors slash hobbies. Thank you for your support, and uh, see you again soon. Bye.